I get emotional when I talk about NFL films because Steve Sable, without Steve Sable and NFL films, NFL Network does not exist. It is that simple. It is that simple. And then when I hosted NFL The Grind on Epix, uh, Michael Wright, the president of Epix, gave me the opportunity to do this show. And I'm like, who's, who, who's the producers, who's the production house? He said, NFL Films. I'm like, in. And then when I first did a voiceover over a spinning football, a tight shot of a spinning football, I showed it to Susie, my wife. I'm like, this is a childhood dream <laughs> come true. A childhood dream come true. And this is the only way I could set up this man who's part of the NFL, the grind on Epic Show. And he was there for the NFL 100 all-time team show. Essentially, that's how deep the roster was. He was essentially a segment producer of Bill Belichick's for that show. But outside of all that, he's the vice president and senior coordinating producer of NFL Films and the director of the latest 30 for 30, Al Davis versus the NFL. Thrilled to have as a guest on the Rich Eisen Show, Ken Rogers. How are you, Ken? I'm doing great. I, I sort of feel like a uh, guest at dinner that forgot a casserole dish. I don't have. I do not have a championship trophy. Yes, you I do. Feel, Ken, I feel a little empty-handed. Ken, let me tell you this story. You may not know it, but when for the NFL 100 All-Time Team Show, uh, as you know, they set up like this uh, mini photography area in a small kitchenette that was off of the dining area that was set up as the right. green room. Uh, for for us to have breakfast and lunch because it was a long day. So I'm standing there with Bill Belichick taking photographs with Bill, <laughs> okay? Like, a, a, these are promotional photographs with Bill Belichick, words I never thought I would say ever, okay? And so we're taking photographs, Bill and I, and we he points to the top of the kitchenette, like a, there's, there's a, a, a cabinet and small space above the cabinet, and he points, and yeah. resting up there are two Emmy Awards. And Bill says to me, they have so many of these, they're putting them on top of cabinets around here, is what he said. That's so true. you've That's got true. a lot <laughs> in the trophy case, sir. Uh, I think we're up to 131. <laughs> and <laughs> I think as you, uh, as you pointed out, uh, that's, that's all due to Steve Sable for sure. Oh. You know, Ken, it's it's amazing, man. When when um, and then we'll get obviously to the thirty for thirty for big time NFL Network events, Thursday night football, whatever. And you hear the hallmark is a television phrase, which oh. is the shot of NFL NFL Network um, logo. He goes, "You're watching uh, a production of NFL Network." It's Steve Sable, and I get yep. goosebumps even just talking to you about it, Ken Rogers, right now. I I am not alone. Many uh, employees of NFL Films, when we hear that, tear up. Um, I, I still do um, at, when his birthday comes around, of course, but any big game, any big situation, any player comes around, a, a big play, all of us think about what Steve would say, how he would react. He, he really was the historian of the game, um, he and his father created a company that would preserve the history of the game. And without it, many of us wouldn't have the memories that we do of the game. You know, when you think of the Immaculate Reception, you don't think of the newspaper account you read about the game. You don't think about the broadcast that you saw because it wasn't broadcast all around the country. You remember the NFL Films recap. You know, they invented the highlight package. They invented the, the wiring of coaches and players. They invented the slow motion replay. I mean, they invented the Follies film. Yes. The, the, it, it's amazing what they created for all of us, um, in, not just in our childhoods, but that continues today. Ken Rogers here on the Rich Eisen Show, wearing many hats for NFL Films, vice president, senior courting producer, and the director of the new 30 for 30 available now on ESPN plus and Disney. Now Al Davis versus the NFL. I, you know what, when I heard that this was going down and you were directing it, I'm like, this is must see television. And this is also television. I can't believe we are seeing it. Could you, could, I, I, the, if I had told you maybe at the outset of your tenure at, at NFL films, Hey, the NFL is going to be, uh, yeah, that, that sounds like a 30 for 30. What if I told you that you were going to actually do a film on Al Davis suing the NFL? 
<laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is crazy that this is actually going down right now. It's true. I mean, the fact that we could tell this story as a testament to the NFL opening up its archives, and, you know, it's 40 years old now, but there's some incendiary stuff in here. I mean, when you talk about an, uh, an owner of a team suing the National Football League and insulting the commissioner of the league on the courthouse steps, I mean, it's amazing. And then another owner testifying against Al Davis and having a heart attack while on the stand. <laughs> I mean, this is equivalent. Cool Think about today if – Jerry Jones was testifying against Robert Kraft, and while he's doing so, he has a heart attack and is wheeled out. And then Robert Kraft comes out onto the courthouse steps and says he has no respect for Roger Goodell uh, because he has led the NFL down the wrong path and he's suing them. I mean, it, it, it was insanity, and it would blow up Twitter today if yes. it happened. And it was great to revisit that the Wild West of... NFL business practice. If there was only such a thing as an at Al Davis account. <laughs> yes, sir. I agree with you, Ken Rogers. Yes. It would be. Was, so what is one of a kind. What did you learn from this? Is, is there anything that you learned from from this uh, documentary? Here's what I, I learned. And I think it's a great lesson for all of us. Um, and, and you certainly knew Al. And, and those of us who I only met him briefly. But those of us who mostly heard stories see him as a as a rebel um a contrarian an outlaw maybe but he was not a bad guy he was actually a really good guy and i think it's easy to see people who fight authority and uh, go against the norm and see differently than you do uh certainly these days in america it's easy to see opponents as enemies uh, because they see things different, differently than you do. And Pete and Al fought tooth and nail. I mean, Roselle Davis was the war to end all wars for decades. But at the end of the day, when Pete Roselle retired, in this film you see it, Al Davis has one of the most heartfelt soliloquies about his opponent and describes them hugging, physically hugging, and even mentions the word love. And you realize that back then, opponents didn't mean good and bad. They, they respected each other. There was actually even love for each other, um, even though they went to court and, and sued each other <laughs> and disliked each other on many levels. Um, they didn't let it go into hatred and vitriol uh, the way I think it's easy to do in today's world and, and with today's social media. Al Davis versus the NFL new 30 for 30 director from NFL Films, Ken Rogers, here on the Rich Eisen Show. It was a choice, no doubt, for you to, in a, in a way, bring Roselle and Al Davis back to life um, by, I guess, bringing their faces and putting them <laughs> putting them on, on bodies. And um, uh, there's a photograph yeah. up. That I'm describing right now um, for the no for our radio audience, no doubt the enwrapped uh, audience on Raider Nation Radio 920 AM in Vegas, uh, where you've got, I guess that that Al Davis torch that is in the new stadium there in Las Vegas, Nevada, behind you. Why did you decide to do this, and how did you do this? Like, what was that about, Ken? Well, I figured I'd risk my career. You know, <laughs> what I mean, at, at, at a certain point, you got to go for it, right? Right? Yeah. Um, right. Listen. Um, the simple answer is Al Davis and Pete Rozelle are no longer with us. And we felt like this was their story to tell. Um, and, you know, who knows one day, a uh, long time from now, maybe you'll still be, you'll still be on the air a hundred years from now, uh, yeah. you know, reporting as a deep fake version of yourself. <laughs> I have no idea where technology is going, Rich, but in the old days, we would have just hired actors to tell the, to have Al Davis and Pete Rozelle, you know, come back and tell their stories themselves. That's that's what many films, documentaries have done in the past. But instead of putting masks or prosthetics or makeup and, and trying to do it that way, we decided to do it digitally. And, you know, it's the same thing that Star Wars used to bring back Princess Leia after Carrie Fisher died and and that Martin Scorsese used to make Robert De Niro look younger. It was fake technology, um, certainly uh, a burgeoning 
uh, technology, something that's getting better and better every day. Um, and we decided to do it technically and it was really fun to try and uh, be the first sports documentary to do it. I doubt we'll be the last. And, um, I think there'll probably be uh, Sports Center commercials using <laughs> you and Stu uh, 50 years from now. You know that you'll look uh, you look like you're a fresh faced 25 year old. What does it mean though? To, what does it mean though, Ken? That people think I'm a deep fake right now. What does that mean for my <laughs> career? I don't. That's very. But you know, in, in all seriousness, though, let's be honest. Steve Sable would love this. You're using a Scorsese a film uh production concept in, in in an nfl film documentary for for espn like the, something that that lucas did like this is yeah. this is films it's that's why it's well, called nfl films like this is exactly yeah. what steve sable would want you to do ken he loved he loved technology he loved new tools and most of all he loved taking chances um he, he really when when he was really sick at the end of his life he wanted us to be proud of what NFL film stood for, but push forward in the future and try to make our own legacies. And one of the things he always did at NFL films is give away every year a cash bonus for the most magnificent failure of the year. <laughs> and that was the failure that was I love it. no doubt a failure, but was magnificent in its attempt. And uh, I, I still fight for that award, even though he's not here to give it out. <laughs> I still I still take pride in, in once in a while trying to win that cash award that he used to pass out in, a, in an envelope, and I did win it once in a while. And it was always, it was always to me as important as an Emmy because it meant that you were willing to take the chance. You were willing to fail. And he saw great value in that. And, uh, you know, I didn't get the cash this time, but <laughs> I was willing to go out there and fail. Um, and, and I don't think we did. I think it was a magnificent attempt, and uh, and I th think it succeeded. Ken Rogers here on the Rich Eisen Show, director of Al Davis versus the NFL. Check it out, ESPN Plus and Disney Now. And while we're still on the subject of Sable, uh, which I who I could talk about for hours, you know, hosting NFL The Grind on Epix with you and Paul Camerata and the rest of the NFL Films crew behind it. Uh, when I was like, hey, let's do the end of show essay on X, Y, and Z. And then you would dive into Steve Sable's note card system where he would just pull stuff from periodicals or articles or just write down quotes that George Patton once said or what Orwell once said and put it on a card that was labeled like Tom Brady or, or labeled Tom Landry. And he would file it away and would pull it out so he could use it for himself. And you gave us to me to help me write. Oh, God, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it, Ken. And on occasion, Chris Brockman, my producer here, can attest, we would we would put that stuff on the air here. I mean, we Absolutely. would. And what a what a so that card system still exists correct as well it does i mean his office still exists uh very much like it did the day he passed and i mean it was the internet before the internet yeah. he, he would he would read dozens of newspapers on a daily basis he of course was a voracious reader of novels and and everything else periodicals and he would write down quotes that would be in an article about uh, Napoleon. It would be a yes. quote about Napoleon, but he would see that it applied to Doug Flutie, uh, Be to Vince Lombardi, or Doug Flutie. Because right. Doug Flutie is a good example, right. uh, and he would put it in a in a file under Doug Flutie's name. And still to this day, if we're writing about Doug Flutie, or we're writing about coaches in general, he has files for both big picture general, like failure or close games or overtime Amazing. subjects like that, but also individuals that now we, we may forget because they're, they played in the sixties or seventies or eighties when he was at his height. So in a way he's still with us and, and really giving us his opinions on a lot of subjects. All right, before I let you go, Ken, I know I'm going to put you on the spot here by asking this question, but you know, <laughs> you, you've been there before. So what, Sable once told me, Steve Sable once told me, that I think it might have been 15 some odd years ago, that there is in fact an archive tape of outtakes of John Facenda cursing a blue streak 
um, and that exists. And I asked him, can I hear it? He said, no. Will anybody ever hear it? He said, forget that. Never. Have you ever heard it? Have you ever heard I, that? Outcome, I have really? not. I have not. But yes. I'm going to go looking for it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere. You know, we've already established he's kept everything. He said that for Senda, whenever he would like, you know, it wasn't one take John. Uh, you know, we're very rare. Anybody does it in one take. He said that for Senda, whenever he would maybe get caught up on a line that he couldn't nail to his liking, he would just like curse up a blue streak. And those outtakes exist. Man, would I love to hear those. Those would oh, be my. phenomenal. Man, that sounds like a new 30 for 30. <laughs> the search of the lost Facenda Blue Streak tapes. <laughs> I would love to help with that production. Right? You know, yes, I know you would. Unbelievable. Uh, thanks very much, Ken. Appreciate the time. Um, I love chatting with you. Um, let's, let's, let's talk soon about everything, and everybody should check out Al Davis versus the NFL again on ESPN Plus and Disney now. Thanks for the time. True pleasure. Thank you, Rich. Right back at you. At Ken Rogers NFL. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.